Hello and welcome to Tommy's Game Table. My name's Tommy and today we're going to be looking at making a mountain. Let's have a look at what we're going to need for today's build. We're going to need a hot glue gun, hot wire cutter, stacks of random pieces of foam, whatever you can find laying around. I'm going to use some XPF and I've also got these cool sort of modular round pieces because I might look at making something on top of this mountain. We'll wait and see. A bit of a mix of our Mod Podge and black paint. We might even throw a bit of sand in there just for some nice texture. A cup of water, some brushes, a palette for just for mixing some paint in, and obviously a few bits of paint and some flocking just to make it look really cool at the end as well. All right, let's get into today's build. So I'm gonna start off with our chunks of foam here. And basically what we wanna do is we just wanna start sticking all this stuff together. Start off with your base piece, nice big piece at the bottom. Alrighty, so once your hot glue gun is nicely heated up, we just wanna come through and put a nice big chunk of glue. Over here. You can also use PVA, I'm just using hot glue just for the sake of drying time. And then you just want to grab your next biggest piece and just set that on there. Make sure you put a little bit of downward pressure on it just so it sets nice and flush with the next piece. And then we're just going to move straight on to the next one. And get your next piece and then just same thing, pop him on there. Nice bit of downward pressure. So this is styrofoam, so it's a little bit more susceptible to heat, so I'm just gonna turn my gun down to low so it doesn't get too hot. And this one's a little bit too big for this piece, but that's fine, we're gonna make it work really cool. And honestly, PVA play works even better for this job, um, just because once PVA is set, it's super, super strong. It bonds really, really well. Um, hot glue gun is basically good if you're just a little bit more impatient or you don't have time for things to wait and dry. So um, if you want, if you prefer to use PVA, go for it. Just put all your layers together and then just put a heap of heavy books or some weights down on it, just so it stays nice and weighted down. Beautiful. And then our final piece, just this little circular piece. It doesn't have to be circular. You can make this as sort of realistic or have something on top if you like, or a tree from one of our previous videos or a little shack on top of the mountain. Um, feel free to build some rocks as well if you want to look back at some of the old videos. Anything that makes this sort of just a little bit of a point of difference. But because I've already made myself a mountain, I just want something that's a little bit different to my other one. And there you have it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab, we're just gonna let that sort of set for a second just so that all that glue is nice and hardened, ready to rock and roll. And then we'll move straight on to the next step. All right, so now that that's set, we can take our weights off of there. And that's what you should be left with. You should be able to pick it up from that top piece. It should be nice and secure. And now we're just gonna jump straight onto our hot wire burner, handheld. So turn him on. And we're just gonna start sculpting. So have a bit of a clear indication of what you'd like in mind. I'm picturing sort of almost like a ruin on top of here that's completely been leveled. Maybe just like the flooring's been left behind, but the rest of it's just gonna be really organic mountain faces. So I want this to all kind of blend in together, but look like it's got a little bit of a man-made element to it. So we're gonna come through, and first of all, just start cutting away some of these corners. Beautiful. So there's our first sort of organic looking shape. Hang on to all these offcuts as well because they're nice decent bits of foam. You can use those for projects in the future. All right, that looks cool, I love that. So now we're gonna come through and take a little bit of this edge off. So it's basically just making it not look like it's stacked up pieces of foam. Beautiful, there's our next piece. Get that out of the way. You can already starting to see that sort of come together looking really nice. So you can use this for like a high fantasy setting or if you want to make something that's a little bit more post-apocalyptic y wastelandy vibe. You can do basically anything. This is a really cool sort of handy project that you can turn into anything that you want. So I kind of like that we've got a bit of a ledge here, so I don't want to mess with that because I want this to be playable for Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. But I might knock off a little bit of this edge here. Cut a little bit into that next section just to get, have it not too much of a straight edge on that line. Beautiful, that looks great. Coming around this side now. I think I want something similar as well. I want this sort of whole piece to be quite playable and maybe even a little bit of this lower section. So that's most of our perimeter done. We still, it still looks like foam stacked on foam. So we're just gonna come through and keep sort of chopping away at it and giving it some more character and detail wherever you think it's necessary. Like you have these little spots here with a ledge on there. I actually think it looks pretty cool. 
So uh, I'm going to leave a little bit of that, but just sort of come in and take a little bit more of a chunk out of the bottom of that. And very similar to our rocks, we're just going to come through and just start really giving it some texture, a little bit of character and such. Round off a lot of the edges, we don't want any sort of two right angular edges or anything on this. You can see I'm just coming through and just creating as much texture as I can. And later on down the track, we're going to show you how to create all kinds of cool different texture using plasters and tile grout and all that kind of stuff. But I just figured I'd do one more big build, keeping it simple with just foam, hot wire cutter and a hot glue gun. Alright, so what I'm working on here is I want to have some form of way of these players being able to get to the top of this uh, mountain. So we're going to make like a little bit of a slope or some stairs. Beautiful. So there's our stairs. You want to make sure you've got it big enough so you can still fit a mini on there. So just be, keep that in mind when you're making these. And same thing, come through and give it a little bit of texture. We're going to cover a lot of this stuff up with flocking and stuff, but just in case anything pokes through that isn't flocked, we still want it to look nice and aged and nice and textured. So now I'm currently just building some stairs up into this top section as well just to try and make it more modular so that it makes sense for the build as well, so that it's a playable piece on the game table. Beautiful. All right, so we've got a nice little bit of a staircase coming all the way up to this shrine thing. Now we're just gonna come through and just give this a little bit more texture around these edges. We still wanna try and maintain that bit of a circular shape, but we also, we wanted to make it look as though it's been through countless battles and it's like, you know, thousand years old, aged, weathered, all that stuff that I love. Make sure you throw a little bit of texture on these flat spots. You know, take a little bit of these edges off because we don't want it to look too... We don't want it to look as though it's just foam stacked on top of foam that's been cut with a hot cutter. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to give it a little tiny bit of texture on this top bit. We want to keep this pretty round, but we're just going to sort of take a little bit of that edge off. So now that you've got your sort of main shape of the structure there, what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a few of these off cuts from the start of the build. And we just want to make like a few little rocks. So grab some smaller pieces and you just want to start carving. Sort of like that video that we watched a few weeks back. We just want to start making some cool little rocks. Sweet. So just some little rocks like that. And then what we want to do is we want to grab our hot glue gun again. And we'll come through and just want to stick a couple of these rocks on these uh, edges of the, of the shrine, I guess you'd call it, or the summoning circle. And I'm not really overthinking this too much. Just cut out a few different random shapes that I want to just give it a bit more character. Beautiful. And that is pretty much the main part of the structure. Um, feel free to throw like a bit of a symbol or something into the middle of that circle if you're doing something very similar to my build that we're doing here today. Um, we might even look at doing something cool like that. All right, so I'm just gonna find roughly the center here. I'm just gonna score a bit of a circular marking across this whole thing. Just want it just enough so you can see it because we're going to come back through and score this. And I'm just going to do like a simple pentagram or something like that because I can draw those. I remember making those, drawing those in school when I was a bit of a goth. So what we're going to do is grab a ruler, something to that kind of effect. It's not the greatest or the neatest <laughs> pentagram I've ever done, but that'll just have to do. Again, we don't want this to look too, uh, too neat. Everything's going to be crude. You can tell that I like to do things crude because I'm actually not that great at drawing or doing artwork or anything like that. But what we're going to do, we're going to come back through with more of our sort of pencil pen type attachment on our hot cutter. And we're just going to come through and basically draw that symbol in, maybe give it a little bit more sort of uh, character while you're going. So that's our basic sort of setup for the old build. I think these stones have really made it look super cool. So now we're gonna come through and we're just gonna start slapping a little bit of black paint, Mod Podge and sand mix, just to give it a nice bit of texture and make it look really cool. All right, so this is just our same batch that we used with the pillars from a few videos ago. Still lasts, goes a long way this stuff. So I've just added a little tiny bit more paint and a little bit more Mod Podge just for a little tiny bit less texture. Not much though. This is the type of thing you can just keep topping up forever and ever, and it'll basically never really go out of date as long as you keep a nice seal on it. Mod Podge, black paint, and sand mix over the whole thing. We want to seal this whole lot, give it some more texture, make it look great. So I'm just going to literally dip a bit of it, just tip a bit of it on there, straight up. And I'm going to start spreading it all around this build. And when you're doing this, making sure you get through into all the nooks and crannies and everything. Got lots of nice texture from our hot wire cutter. So 
make sure you're just filling in all those gaps so you haven't got your foam poking through. All right, so once you've got all that undercoat on there, and I've actually just let this outside and let it dry for a little while. It's a nice hot day today, so it didn't take too long to dry. So now we can move straight on to the painting phase. We're gonna be using a little bit of the or brown, a little bit of white, some fortress gray. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of a, what's this one? Filthy brown, it's a bit of a yellowy brown color, and also a bit of a wash as well. And we're also gonna move on to a bit of flocking after that. So without any further ado, we'll jump straight into it. And a nice big brush, because we're basically gonna be putting down most of the foundational work first. So what we wanna focus on is just making sure it doesn't look too stale. You can even see in one of my previous ones, it's just gray with flocking, and it, it turned out really cool. But I think we can just do something a little bit cool and that create a little bit more depth. We're gonna start off with our other sort of colors. So a bit of a yellowy brown to start off with, give that a good shake up. And we're gonna be doing like an overbrush. So not quite a dry brush, not sort of heavy handed either. It's gonna be somewhere in between. Sweet. So now that you've splattered a little bit of that yellow everywhere, we're gonna move straight over to our brown color now. You just use the same brush. Doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of that yellow still loaded up. Get most of it off of, uh, with a little bit of paper towel, but a little bit heavier handed this time and we want to focus on some even some of these top surfaces because that's going to create a little bit more of a dirt kind of effect it doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy with this because we're going to be hitting most of it with a gray over the whole lot of it some parts will leave a little bit more like dirt other parts will leave a little bit uh, will go a bit heavier and now i'm just going like a pretty heavy dry brush with that brown even over a little bit of the cliff faces but I've got barely any paint in my brush. I'm just sort of doing a little bit of blending with it. Now that you've got most of that brown on there, we've went pretty heavy with it. So especially a lot of these flat surfaces, because that's mainly going to get covered up with a lot of flocking. So we just wanted to just create a little bit of a dirty depth once that's gone on. Notice that we haven't really touched this one yet. We want that to mainly look like stone on top. Now we're going to be using a uh, fortress gray, and this is probably going to be the heaviest coat that we're putting on. Uh, there are areas where we're going to let a lot of that brown sort of poke through, mainly on the sort of flat surfaces, which we're going to be simulating like dirt. All right, now we want to be doing pretty much like an overbrush again. We can be quite heavy handed with this one though. So we're really focusing in on this top section now. This is kind of like the, the altar piece, if it's some kind of uh, sacrificial site or, or where you'd summon something. But we want that to really stand out and look a lot more like stone than the rest of it. And this time we're gonna be going more so for the, all these cliff edges all around the sides and we're gonna be relatively heavy handed there now. And again, you can do any kind of variation of this. This is just basically teaching you how to create layers with foam to create height and make build, to start building bigger projects. Beautiful. So now you've got that really nice, thick, heavy coat of gray. You can see it just sort of starts tying everything in together really nicely now. It's looking wonderful. All right, so now we're gonna move on to just a slightly lighter color. So we're gonna grab our white. And we're just gonna mix that up with our gray that we've already got in the palette. It's a dry brush, so it's subtle, but where it is subtle, it's, it punches through really nicely. It just creates more and more depth. And you're really sort of trying to focus in on a lot of the edges, like a lot of the sharp corners and stuff. It just really makes it all stand out a lot nicer. Let our brushes soak. And we're gonna let that dry just for a little bit before we move on to the next step. All right, wow, hasn't that turned up a treat? So good. All right, now we're just gonna throw a nice wash over the whole lot, just a nice umber wash. If you've got a homemade wash, I highly recommend it because it's a big piece and it's very expensive if you're gonna be using these, uh, these expensive paints and washes. Beautiful. Now that we've popped that umber wash over it, just let that one dry for a little while before we move on to the next stage. Now that we've got all that paint looking nice and dry, it's looking awesome, got all those different colors all punching through, giving a bit of contrast, a little bit of depth. Uh, but now we're gonna move on to the really fun part. We're gonna be doing some nice flocking. So I'm gonna use a few different types of flocks. So I've got some of these ones by Woodland Scenics. There's some fine turf and some bushes. I'm also gonna be using one of my favorite ones, the Army Painter, Battlefield Grass, uh, Gamers Grass, Marshall and Set. So those are just like little tufts, so that'll look really, really cool. We can pop some of those in at the end as well. Just the same as what we've done in like our rocks video and a couple of other ones that we've done a little bit of flocking in. We've got our tub of PVA sitting over here. And we've also got our specific glue brush that I use just for doing this. 
and I'm basically just going to work my way from the top down basically. I want most of this top area around the stone to be grassed um, as well as most of these flat surfaces along with a couple of little sort of rocky shaly undulating parts coming out of the cliffs. All right so let's get into it. So again get your PVA just start popping it on everywhere you want that grass. It takes a decent amount of time to dry so you can kind of do some pretty big areas with it before you got to worry about it going off. I'm just going to do a couple of little spots on the stairs. I don't want all the stairs to be sort of covered. Just a couple of spots. All right, now time for the fun bit. We're just going to get our wooden scenic fine turf. And we're just going to start very gently shaking it on. Trying to get all those spots where you put the glue. Beautiful. And then we just simply turn it upside down. Give it a few taps. Voila, there we go. We've got our first layer of flocking down. How exciting. Flocking's great. It makes the whole thing just come together so nicely. Moving right along. Now you can see I'm basically coming through and just doing all of the rest of these spots now. Because again, we've got plenty of dry time, so I'm not too stressed on making sure I get it all applied before the glue goes off. Bumped off from earlier. Wrinkle it all along those flat spots where we've put all that PVA. And now the super fun, messy bit. Turn it upside down. Bap, bap, bap. Bap, bap, bap. Beautiful. So now that we've got our first layer of that fine turf down, now we want to move on to putting our little tufts. This is a fun bit. Putting on these little tufty things, this really starts creating a lot of nice detail and depth that you almost can't achieve without something like this. Bit of variety. You've got these little tufts, individual tufts. And I'm just going to keep it really simple by just using a little bit of hot glue and just sticking them down in places which I think looks cool. Not a lot of rhyme or reason, just whatever you think looks good. So you peel them off. Dab of hot glue. Doesn't need to be much. This is one of those oddly satisfying jobs. Scrap that. I've actually never used this product before. Turns out you don't need anything. They just adhere to it straight away so we can turn our hot glue gun off. How cool is that? I like to sort of stick to I guess like more so in the corners of things and such like that. I might even put one out on the edge here. These things are awesome. I highly, highly recommend getting yourself some of these. Again, these ones are the uh, Marshland set by uh, Gamers Grass. Highly recommend. I'm not sponsored. Although if you want to sponsor me, I'd love that. <laughs> and it's great too because they're all like little different shapes as well. Different, different shapes and sizes. So. You're not going to run the risk of any of it looking too uniformed. What a great product. And you can see that starting to really come together already. It looks absolutely awesome. Beautiful. I think that's looking absolutely fantastic. So we might leave that like that. I don't want to overdo it because that's looking great. Honestly, that is dead set one of the funnest flocking things I've ever used. What a great product. Um, highly recommend it again. So yeah, we're going to move on to our very last stage now. Um, because that was such an easy step, I've decided I'm not going to use any of the wooden scenic bushes. I've just sort of gone pretty ham with those ones. But um, now we're going to be moving on to just putting on a little bit of a different colour of that green. Because this looks pretty flat and a little bit kind of bland at the moment. So we're just going to focus on putting on a little bit more sort of colour and contrast into that mix now. And to do that, we're bringing back our trusty spray adhesive. This is a bit of that uh, quick grip by Sally's. I just got it from Bunnings. So all we're going to do is spray it a little bit on all of these grassy surfaces and then we're going to come back through with this bad boy and we're going to put that over a lot of it. All right, here we go. Now we'll just grab little clumps of this and just start sprinkling it on. Again, this will just break it up a little bit, give it a little bit of slight different variation in colour in certain spots. Right, and that's basically how we should be looking now that we've got all that flocking on. We've given it the tap test and that's all ready to rock and roll. You can see all those nice different colors of uh, grass in there now. We've done the two tones. All those nice different browns coming through on the rocky faces. Beautiful, I think that's just come up an absolute treat. And there we have it folks. That's how you make yourself a cool little mountain for tabletop gaming of all kinds. Um, you can see that you can use it for like Warhammer or any kind of war game that you like or if you prefer like Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons or something. 
always great. That's why I've made lots of flat surfaces. Even on this last one, you can see I've made some steps that are all kind of roughly the same size as the base. So yeah, just always keep that in mind whenever you're building. But honestly, the world is your oyster. You can make whatever you like. Now I know there's lots of videos out there on YouTube, so I'd just like to thank you very much for clicking on this one. And um, with that, I'd also like to give an extra special thanks to my new patrons. We have Corey Dennis, William Gregory, and my brother Sam Rooney. Cheers, bro. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. And if you're thinking about jumping on and supporting me on Patreon, it's just patreon.com forward slash Tommy's Game Table. Cool. Well, I hope you've learned something today. Definitely remember to like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of good stuff, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.